I'm doing a 15 minute follow up session for a client. I'll put a link in the description to the previous session if you're interested in watching. Today we're going to be focusing on the sexual body. So this client has been through a lot of sexual trauma and trauma of the female reproductive organs. So I'm going to go ahead and relax here and get tuned in and then we'll see where spirit guides us today. Okay. It takes so much courage to heal this space. It really does. Especially after a lot of trauma. Years of trauma. I just want to let you know that everything that you've shared with me in the emails just helping me to understand what you've been through it's giving me a lot of perspective on the many layers that are going on with your sacral chakra etheric body sexual body the physical body parts and the energetic body parts the memories the other lifetimes what your sexual body is ready to talk about today um we're just gonna go gentle with it but just kind of um, sending echoes out in your energy field, letting this part of you, which is many parts, know that I'm here to help. It's revealing things and just give me some time here to really process it all and talk about what's coming forward. See what wants to really get looked at first. All right, it's kind of like I'm not it's it's like doesn't want me to say anything out loud just yet. And it's affecting my heart. It's affecting the back of my head. Like it hurts the back of my head. There's kind of like energy tissues that are bulging out in this this space, okay? keep wanting to talk about it but every time I start wanting to talk about what I see it's like um, it gets really tight in my throat and I the idea or the thought the inspiration says no not right now no just let it go no it doesn't need to be talked about it just keeps wanting to be silenced and silenced and silenced and silenced and silenced and silenced and that tells me that what you've been through here has also, like, there's just been so much encouragement to just say nothing at all. It's so sad because when you say nothing at all, you become a prisoner of your inability to speak. And sometimes speaking is a fearful event. Speaking is a judgmental event. Sometimes it, it's just simply easier to deal with it inside yourself. Deal with it on your own. Not bother other people. Um, other people aren't really going to understand anyway. I'm just going to be stronger than all this. Um, or people won't believe me. I mean, there's always reasons not to speak, right? But there's been a lot of... Um, I don't want to use the word damage here, but you have different aspects of your body that um, look at you having not said anything, but then they don't say anything about how that makes them feel. However, they feel kind of judgmental of you not having said anything. You not speaking up enough. But yet they won't speak up to even say it out loud. So you and your um, self-expression, you um, communicating and speaking is a, one of the big things that we're going to work on here too. So now that I just simply have gotten that out, I'm going to you and I'm just giving you a really big hug. And I'm having you stand completely naked before me. And I'm just looking at you as you are. And I'm just 
telling you that you are beautiful. And you don't need to hide the beauty that you are. Because even being able to be naked just to be seen naked is also a form of self-expression. Even if it's not through the voice, it's still communication. You have such a strong nature because even when I come and give you a hug and I love you for as you are, um, you kind of brush it off like you don't need all the, the extra gushiness. Like you, you're okay, you know. But I say you're not actually okay. And sometimes we need to just acknowledge it was hard. It's been really hard. And to give a little bit more... Just It's almost like sinking into the experiences, sinking into the memories. It's not as if you're the type, you don't need the sympathy, you don't need... You know, you, you're a strong person, but sometimes you, you need to just let someone just <sighs> like hold you, you know? How many times in those experiences that you've been in did you just want to collapse in somebody to understand and hold you? Someone to really help you. But by silencing yourself, you just find ways to become strong enough to help yourself and then don't burden other people or whatever, however you want it, to approach it. Do you see how still we're not going into the sexual body because it's been so traumatized? It still doesn't want... It just, it's just very sensitive to even me going there and starting to do the work. What we discovered in that last session, I mean, it was really hard to get you to talk and for you to even express that past life. I feel like there's more to it, like for you to know that you had this beautiful, abundant love, like a lover that is the ultimate lover. But even for you to get that out was really difficult. I'm going to step into your shoes, which is me just stepping into your feet. We're actually in a closet right now. You, for some reason, have no hair. You're bald. And I'm now you and you are me. And so we're, we're working as one right now. And I'm having you look into the mirror. And the next inspiration is to walk through the mirror to the other side of the mirror. Walk into your own reflection. You know what's interesting? There's... There's so much that you can face here, but there's a lot of things that a lot of people could be afraid of that you wouldn't be afraid of it. You're, you've got a thick skin. You're tough. You're really tough. But there's kind of... Um, there's just a layer of chill about it. I'm going to warm that layer up. I don't know why, but it feels like really cold fat. <laughs> like it's, it's like squishy and it's very cold. And it makes me think of fat, like a layer of fat. So I'm just touching it. It's like uncomfortably cold even to touch it. It's, 
It feels uncomfortable to touch it even. You're trying to decide if you're a male or female. And the male side, it's almost like protecting what is the softer side of you. It's the harder, tougher side. I don't know why I keep, you know, sometimes it's like women are the ones that give birth because we're really, really tough. <laughs> You know, they say that if a man were to give birth, he wouldn't be able to do it. Like, you have to be a woman and have the, the feminine design to be able to even cope with the process. Because we're naturally more emotional. There's something about being a woman that we can cope with the process easier than a man could. So, I tell you that your feminine side is strong. And it gives you the ability to... Let more of your feminine side shine to um, shine through, like so that your male and female sides can stand side by side. I still feel like it's a bit of a distraction away from us going straight into um, the most vulnerable place, but. I'm just going to follow this all the way through because this is what your comfort zone is saying right now. And this is important too. So what's interesting is now this male-female side of yourself, they're becoming two bodies. And we're on the other side of the mirror and it's just kind of an empty space, but in the dark there's all these... Um, uncomfortable beings just sort of watching from the shadows and you're not afraid of them at all. They're waiting for you to become weak and you don't. You don't become weak. These This male-female side starts to act like um, a mother and a father. All right. And you're starting to get smaller and smaller, almost like becoming a baby, but you're a baby with a very, it's like you, you're like an egg-shaped baby with arms and legs. And you have a strange kind of yolk-like looking um, gooey that's kind of like where the, the reproductive organs would be. It kind of um, bulges out there. I just see you reaching out um, for mom and dad, but they stand at a distance. And you're kind of in a state of just waiting. And because you're lying down and you're in egg shake, shape, you start to rock yourself back and forth. I try to step forward as myself to come pick you up, but, but I'm not allowed to. I ask you why, why things are starting to feel so cold. And it's because you're, you're not wanted. And there's something interesting about that feeling that you have to, it's almost like feeling not wanted at a very young age, um, you have to get to know yourself now. And there's no distractions. Because if you felt wanted, then you would be going to um, the parental figure, let's say, okay? 
um, to have that experience over and over and over again. And you're molding and shaping yourself based on the design of the parent. But if you feel not wanted, you have to, in a way, then um, be looking out for you all the time. You have to nurture yourself. You have to get to know yourself. So you mold and shape yourself. But the separation from what is natural nurture and love um, creates a chill, a cold feeling. I don't see this. It's like, um, like egg yolk is oozing out and you're getting older and you're starting to stand up. And you're starting to find your own path, like your own direction. You, you, there's a lot of butterflies in your heart and they're like fairy energies. They're really playful and lighthearted and they want to show you many things. You're still kind of, a, you're literally an egg shape. And you have arms and legs. And you have like a broken spot here in the um, sacral chakra but it's also reproductive area it's broken here and this just it's like the clear part is kind of oozing out but there's a bit of a yellowish tint to it as well but it never drips it just kind of stays there it's like held in place somehow but it's gooey I feel like this is what I need to, to see for this part. I just see you running and playing and it's a sunny day and I feel the um, fairies are really sweet and very happy and cheerful. But I actually feel that this is inspiring a little bit more of a desire to kind of vent, all right, at an adult level. We're kind of the mirror, the other side of the mirror, those images, that's all starting to kind of fade over there. And let's see what, it feels like you want to tell me something. It feels like you're okay with me walking into your sacral chakra and sexual body. Now you feel a little bit more comfortable about it. going in here it's all yolky it's all a yellow yolk in here and there's weird little rings like bubbles but they're also kind of like hula hoops like little hula hoops everywhere it's like some of them are o's and some of them are orbs like like spherical and they're like bubbles and they're just Lots of them, little, different sizes, but they're small. And I see them in here. Oh, there's a not nice something in here. It wants to destroy your spirit, like break down, especially the inner child spirit. It really is attracting to, to breaking your inner child spirit. I don't know that it is... A, successfully accomplish that <laughs> with everything you've been through you still have an inner child spirit why does it dislike you so much I'm trying to figure out is this a part of yourself or is this something else where is this coming from what inspired this It's like self-punishing. It's something of a self-punishing. It's like, it's a gross s frequency that sort of attracts self-punishing events to take place. To target your sexual body. The, like the pleasure of living, the pleasures of life. It wants to extinguish your joy. It's a really nasty, it's like a part of you, it's like a wounded part of yourself that became um, 
it's like it's directing the energy back into itself. And it's imprisoning you in a life of real challenge. I'm going to go and just give it a hug. And I tell it it needs to stop. Because you're not... It's who you're harming is also yourself. You're harming yourself. I'm gonna, I need to stay with this for just another minute or two. Because this is somehow a part of your own spirit, okay? Why did it get like this? You've had so many events attracted to your sexual body for a reason. Unreconciled energies, but it's self-punishing. It wants you to suffer. It wants your sexual body to suffer. It wants this area specifically to suffer. I've been cleaning up this yellow yoke, just so you know. I'm just continuing to see it as um, living energy, um, that it, it's perfect just the way that it is. Just continue to send love into it. And as I send love into it, it starts to just... It's not necessarily whether it needs to dry up or disappear or change into something else. Um, but it is altering the energy in the space. It's not all gooey and goopy and... It's just starting to feel kind of open, like an open space, instead of an open space that's filling in with um, egg yolk. I'm continuing to hug this angry side, self-punishing side, and I tell her it's over. I reach into her heart. I tell her it's over. The suffering is over. You don't have to suffer inside and you don't have to inspire greater suffering for yourself. It's time to let go now. <sighs> These O's and there's somehow like re reflections of thoughts or ideas and they're kind of like smoky as well. And so they're starting to subside too. She looks like an anorexic, um, a girl made out of bones. Starved to, to, to almost death. This girl made out of bones is a reflection of what was that very nasty, angry um, part of yourself. I don't know when that began. began. It feels like it began before this life. That is all starting to, to, it's just circulating and it's feeling seen, it's feeling heard, it's feeling like cared about, energies are shifting, and when that energy feels loved and cared about, you, a part of you is reached, okay? So more of the light and the love is reaching yourself. It's helping to subside the self-punishment because now we can start to just 
be okay with just you, right? And you can be okay with you. That's a big part of this too. Forgiveness of not saying anything. You don't really need forgiveness. It's just the way that you needed to be at that time. And it's just part of the learning, right? So what it needed to be at that time. So helping those parts to be okay with that. Again, hugging you. You being exposed. But you being um, beautiful and receiving love and support. And you not having to be so tough. You're still tough no matter what, but you can um, ease the tension, okay? <laughs> it feels more relaxing now, more peaceful. Okay, <laughs> that's all I can share. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity to help you today and for your willingness to share with others. It's a very sensitive topic, it's a very sensitive space. Okay, thank you again. And um, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a beautiful day, everybody.